So it's going to be a sort of purplishy type sky with a bit of yellow perhaps in it, maybe a little bit of blue. And then the trees and everything are going to be a bit greenier um, and a bit bluier to sort of uh, add a bit more atmosphere to the to the reference. So I'm going to wet a band through this middle section. Don't need to go right the way to the end because that's going to get washed out. In fact, no, I will take it to the end. I'll wash it out afterwards. So just really over the hill line and um, <clears throat> into the sky a bit, like so. And I'm going to tilt it away from me. So the board is now, the top of the board is lower than the, the bottom of the board. Color-wise, I'm going to take some purple. So a purple color. Hopefully you can see yep, that that's purple. And into that, I'm going to put a bit of cerulean. So a nice bright purple and some cerulean together, mixed up. And then I'm going to bring this through that wet area, because obviously this hill line, actually I'm going to flatten out just slightly. I don't want it quite so steep. Um, into this middle section. So this is going to be sort of the distant hills and start the sky. And we'll just let that disappear. So one strokeish, and now I tilt it away from me just to get the paint to run into the sky. It's quite wet there, so I'm just going to block that off a bit. All the water seems to be collecting on this left-hand side. So a little bit more tilt, just to get some of that purple to start to creep up into the um, into the sky. I'm going to take my mop brush just to start to wash some of this in and get it moving a bit more. A big mop brush with plenty of water in it. So this has got water in the mop brush as opposed to it being a damp brush, it's a wet brush. And I'm just bringing this up to the, almost the edge of that hill line, running the water along that bit of wash. So on the sky side of the wash. So it's starting to wash out the, um, the color that I've put on initially. Just wash some of that out as well. So that the sky is really soft. So I want just a tint in the sky. I don't want it to be too, too strong. And by having the board tilted away from me, it's gonna stop the water running into the hill line um, and actually run up into the sky. And I'm actually getting a nice split in the color where the cerulean blue is heavier and it's soaked down into the paper and the purple is splitting. So that's why I'm getting these blue streaks happening, which is kind of nice. So let's just wash that right out of the top. Now I'm gonna actually take a bit of yellow now. I want a little bit of yellow in the sky. I'm just washing my brush out. Just a little yellow, very light yellow wash, not too strong. So I'm putting a bit of a mix of yellow. That's a bit dirty. Clean my brush off a bit more. I want it to be a clean yellow. I don't want it a dirty yellow. Obviously, if you've got any purple in the, still in your brush, you will end up making a very dirty yellow, which I don't want. So there we go, a bit of yellow. I'm actually going to start to run that just very quickly into the sky. Try and do it in one stroke, don't play with it. And again, let that tip, let the two colours mix together. So I just need to give that a moment. <clears throat> uh, it's creeping up quite nicely. So 
So once this has gone a little bit matte, then I'll be able to turn it um, back towards me and start on bringing some of this purple Is that down. like a lemon? Was that a lemon yellow shoe? Uh, that was a cad, a cad yellow, um, right. like a lemon or like cadmium yellow pale mm -hmm. um, would work quite nicely for that. Okay. So now I'm just very gently going to start to tilt the board back towards me, but I'm going to mop up the excess water first so I don't get too much run back. Still got a bit of moisture at the top there. I don't want it to run too quickly. So it's all about timing, this is unfortunately. So you just have to be very careful not to get the water to run too fast, but you want it to run enough. So I'm just trying to break up this line to get that yellow to kind of creep down into the purple a little bit. So we get a glow rather than a, a band. And that's probably about enough. So I'm gonna lay it flat now and just let that dry off a touch whilst I get the next bit ready. So I'm going to take a damp brush. So I'm taking some, let's get some clean water. So just take my brush, knock off the excess water. And I'm just going to lose some of this. We don't need that because that's going to be a tree. I'm just going to softly fade that out or rub it out as it were. Okay. That's enough. So it's starting to go a bit mad now. I'm just looking at it at the ang at an angle just to see how much moisture I've got in there before I start to tilt the board back towards me more. Um, and then I can actually start to bring the colors down. Don't want to do this too early because if you do it too early, there's too much moisture and you'll end up um the paint will run too quickly and then you just lose all of this nice stuff so i just need to give it a moment so i'll have a swig of coffee rather than play with it and then we'll start to bring some colors down into the river because obviously these are all our lightest colors we need to put those in first so that we keep those nice um light colors as we progress the painting Okay, in actual fact, I might just give that a quick blast with a hairdryer. I can move on. So I'm now going to tilt the board towards me and start to introduce some moisture into the river area. Doesn't matter if it goes into the banks a bit, because obviously that's going to be darker than the colours we're putting on now. But um, you don't need to cover the whole area. You know, you don't need to cover all these two sides with water because it will be harder to control the shape of the river if we do that. So just the, just the general river shape. Nice bit of water all the way through. In fact, you may even want to go just slightly wider than the and the river shape just to give a little bit of creep room. Not too far, just a little bit. There we go. Okay, now color wise, so I'm going to pull some of those nice purpley colors down into the river. So using the same mixture of the, um, the purple and the cerulean blue mixed together. And obviously make sure you mix enough of this because if you put it on too, in too thin a mix, you'll end up not getting any color on your paint because this is quite wet. So you do need to make sure you've mixed enough color up. <clears throat> okay, so now then, I'm gonna start to bring it in from um, this top edge and just let it run down and then I'm gonna start to wash some of it out. <clears throat> so it's gonna get a bit, Bit, bit messy, but never mind. So here we go. Coming in underneath the sort of shadows. Just gonna let it run down towards me. So tilting the board a bit more. <clears throat> and 
and we've got a lot of it down this side, although it's not all going to be purple. I'm going to add some other colours into this. A bit more tilt <clears throat> and a bit of spray. Using my spray bottle now. So you're going to wash out some areas so that they're lighter than others because we want that sort of glow within the river. This is almost like a reverse of what I did in the sky. So I'm putting the color down and then we're just washing out elements of it to give us this, this sort of effect. So a bit more blue. And I might even put a bit of yellow in there in a second, in this bottom shadow. So continuing these colors through. I'm going to put a bit more tone into that. So I'm going to take some yellow and cerulean now. So it's still this similar color mix. It's just got the yellow and the blue rather than the purple and the blue. And actually, I'm going to put a bit of Payne's Grey in there just to darken it as well. Don't want it too light. So a bit of Payne's Grey in these colours. And then I'm going to start to drop these in. Leaving some of that nice purple on the edge there. Just going to have a little bit of this on the bank here where there's going to be a bit of reflection. A bit more colour. because It's quite a big reflection, this uh, shadow, this one. And then I'll wash out the bottom just to create a little, little bit of difference. Uh, okay. And perhaps we'll just have a tiny bit let that creep down. We're going to play around with this tree in the shadow anyway, so it's going to introduce a little bit there, perhaps just a teeny bit in here. Okay, that's probably enough. So now I'm going to wash out a little bit of this reflection. Just using my spray bottle again to break the edge up. Okay, perhaps a little bit in here, just to soften off that reflection. And I need a little bit more light just here. We'll wash all that out. Okay, so I'm going to lift that up now just to touch, just to mop up some of this water that's collecting at the bottom. There's a lot of moisture we put into the board there. So just run some of that away. <clears throat> right, and I'm going to lay that back down a little bit flatter. Still a slight tilt on the board, but um, not anywhere near as steep as it was. I'm just going to wash out, make sure there's no lines there, so just put a bit more water. Yeah. And then I can start to dry that. So just taking my mop brush again, big brush. We've actually got a few little cows in the distance there, which I might put in uh, at the very end. The A um, little bit of moisture into these trees. Um, trying to leave a few little holes of the nice yellow poking through. So I don't, I'm trying not to wet it as a massive block of, um, of color, uh, sorry, wet area. 
And then I'll continue this moisture down this left hand side as we talked about. Uh, all the way through, let's just bring that a little bit further into those trees. Just make sure it's not dried out. And then I'll just let that um, break a little bit at the bottom now. I'm not too fussed about what goes on down there because that's going to be painted almost as a separate entity. Um, okay, so that's the first bit of moisture applied. Just making sure it is wet enough. Okay, so color wise, then, as I said, I'm going to go slightly blue greeny. So I'm going to take some um, like phthalo blue and put some yellow in it. <coughs> Excuse me. May even have some of the um, cerulean in there as well, a little bit of cerulean. I want it to be a cool blue, a little bit more cerulean. So against obviously all these nice purpley, yellowy colours, I'm going to have these sort of cooler, cooler colours in the in the blues and the greens, and obviously right back in the distance. Um, I don't want it incredibly strong, but I want enough colour on there. I'm just changing my brush to something a little bit more controllable, a bit more of a point on it. There we go. So sort of a, a bluish green is really what I've got here. A bit more blue, I think. more of that. It's a very powerful colour, the phthalo blue, so you have to be slightly careful with, with it. It's very highly tinting. So again, coming slightly under the, um, the wet area that I've already put on. Stuart, start... if you haven't got the phthalo blue, what do you suggest? Uh, you can use um, any blue, really. I mean, it's just that the phthalo blue is a cool blue. That's the only reason I'm using it. Um, you can use cerulean or ultramarine. Um, any blue will do. It's just that it won't have the same cooling effect unless it's a cool blue. <clears throat> so just bringing oh, Stuart. that. Stuart. Yeah. I'm sorry, Stuart. Are you painting that on wet? Yeah, it's all on wet. Yeah. Oh, wet. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Yeah, didn't you just see me just put the. the <laughs> Sorry, I was, I was finishing. Now I was drying my other oh, thing okay. and I was attention. Sorry. That's all right. <laughs> no worries. No, no, no. So I basically just took the mop brush and I, okay. um, I just applied moisture to this whole area. Right. All right. Okay. Thank you. So yeah. Bring it down to the watery area. Now, as we get down to the watery area, if you didn't put enough moisture, obviously on, you may need to add a little bit so that you don't get a hard line because you want to keep this fairly soft. I'm just going to run a brush along there just to keep it nice and a nice soft edge. Then I'm going to continue my greens, or this greeny blue, over to this left hand side, and then we'll get this main tree filled in. Claire? Hello? Uh, did you leave your mic on? <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Oh, sorry, I did. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's just bring this up into this tree. <clears throat> and try and leave some holes where the yellow can poke, poke through. Uh, just coming up to the top there. Keep it tree shapeish, whatever that is. Um, a bit more color into that tree. 
might just let that one mist out a little bit more. Then we'll continue down now. So I'm going to tilt the board towards me a little bit now. And continue this wash down this left hand side. So a bit more of those colours. So the same colours, the, the phthalo -y blue, the yellow and the cerulean. Um, bring a bit of that up here. <clears throat> bring it down into this bank a little bit. It's a bank that sort of juts out there. Continue it down. And then as I get so far, I'm then just going to wash it out and just let it run down. Because I don't really want to paint this just yet, this left hand side. Going to be sort of treated as a separate entity. So I'm going to take a pipette, put some water in it. So just some moisture in a pipette. You could just use a brush if you don't want to use a pipette. And then I'm just going to let it run all the way down and then away on this left hand side. Perhaps in here. And then I get my spray bottle and I'll just wash away the bottom. Just let it run like so. Okay, and then I'm going to get a damp brush now and just tidy up some of the edges. So just to remind you, damp brush being funky brush in water, take some tissue, blot off the excess water, and then you can just run it along any edges that you want to soften. So like this, I just want to soften those edges off where they're meeting the the purples in the river. So we don't have too hard a line. At those points. Soften that off there a bit. Might even lift out a bit of colour there just to get a bit of light back into that shadow reflection. <clears throat> but I don't want to play with it too much, so we've got to be very careful not to fiddle um, at this point. Because otherwise all that fiddling is going to reintroduce moisture and it's going to reintroduce edges. Um, and we want to keep it quite soft in the wet and wet style. So let's give that another blast with the hairdryer as I tilt it on the hand side. Uh, this tree line over here so that we've got at least that filled in and then we can turn our attention down to this and then we can then start to put in any darker tones that we want to put in to sort of pull it all together. So just with my um, big mop brush again, I'm going to introduce moisture now into this right hand side in a similar fashion we did on the left hand side. So leaving a few holes i.e. dry areas um, within the wet that you're putting down. So you let some of the undercolor show through um, in this next wash. So just bringing the moisture all the way through this right hand side. And then right the way down to the bank. We've already painted. And I'll probably make it a little bit longer than that so that it doesn't get stuck on that edge. So like I was just saying to Claire, thinking about where the paint's going to flow to and how their edges and 
the areas of paint are going to interact with one another. Here's a good example. When we put that wash on here, what's going to happen on this edge? Yeah, how do we merge the two together so we don't just have one piece of colour button up against another piece of colour and have a very solid edge? So that's a bit of moisture on there now. So taking my brush again, I'm going to use a similar colour as we've just used on this side as our under colour. Maybe I'll change it up a little bit and put a um, perhaps have a little bit of brown, just a tiny bit of brown in there. That's just a burnt umber. Okay, and then I'll start to introduce this on this left hand side into the moisture. And I'm going to I'm going to um, manipulate this. I'm not just going to leave it as one color. I'll probably add a little bit more brown or a little bit more purple in spaces just to just so it's not one single massive color. I want I want it to be a bit more um, broken in color. And how the color, and this is where wet and wet works very, very well because the colors just mingle and merge without you having to do too much. So I'm going to go slightly more purpley now, back to my original purple color. And so it's not too purple, I'm going to put a bit of yellow in there just to brown it down slightly, bring some of that in here as well. <clears throat> can even do a little bit of tapping to get some more broken color in there so i'm just tapping the brush against my finger to add a little bit of um variation in the way the color is going down Now I'm going to go into a bit more yellow on the edge of the the, um, the wash because we've got a very yellow sky. So I'm going to introduce a bit more yellow on the edge here. And obviously then when I come over my darker colors later, this will get incorporated into the um into the paint uh, just continue that tree down Actually, my moisture is a little bit short on that left hand side so i'm going to take a bit of water in a brush to soften off this edge to work it into the color that i've already got um, on the painting a bit more brown more green so the blues and the yellows so cerulean and the, the yellow and the darker blue that we used in these colors Have some of that as well a few spots Because obviously foliage doesn't tend to be just one one color it's got variation in it uh, trying to replicate a little bit of that and break up any areas that are too solid a bit more brown perhaps a little bit of yellow in the brown to make it a bit more orangey as I'm coming down on this this side a bit more purple into those browns a bit more on that a bit stronger on the bottom of the tree to be a little bit darker than the higher up sections suggesting that we're coming down to a bank or some of that darker blue 
in the same colors. And start to bring this down to the bank line. Clean that brush off. Going to go into the lighter greens now. Because we're coming down to the bank. Start to work that into this edge of the grasses that's on the bank side. Bit more water just to pull that out. Might use my big brush for this just to wash this edge out. More green. Bit more blue, cerulean, slightly stronger. While the paint's all nice and wet still, we can bring some nice cerulean marks in here. So obviously this is all very bluish. So this will help to tie, tie the colors together. I'm just gonna spray this edge out because it's gonna go Hard otherwise. Let that bleed down into the into the reflection. So a bit more cerulean, a few flecks of it up in the tree itself, and this is using it fairly neat, so not too much, um, not too much moisture in it. Otherwise, it will spread a bit too quickly. Just to give an indication of some foliage or something going on up in the tree here. <clears throat> There's no point worrying about branches or uh, anything like that because obviously they won't stay put. It's more about just giving an indication of a change in colour and tone. Okay, so that's fine. Now I need to tilt this slightly because that's running at an angle. I want it to run in the direction of the reflection. <clears throat> or shadow, whatever you want to call it. I'll give that a moment. And then I'm going to introduce a little bit more darker color down here. So let's mix up, let's move that over. Some more of the blue, the dark blue, the phthalo blue, the azure blue, whatever blue you've got. Some of the burnt umber, not the burnt sienna, the burnt umber. So it's quite a dark, quite a dark mix. And then I'm going to start to bring that into this reflective area while it's still wet. So that we can get it to bleed down a little bit and mingle with the colours that are already on the painting in a natural fashion, as opposed to being too broken. The bank sort of comes <clears throat> down this way. So I'm actually gonna leave a few broken marks. Bring the paint out a little bit further. tilt the board back towards me so it runs down the painting. Let's just give that a little spray. So I'm going to hold my hand over the top. Oh, that's a little bit more. Just 
just to get the paint to run a bit quicker. Down the um, into the water. Tip that this way a bit more. Mop up some of this excess. And then I'm going to take some moisture in a pet and just run a little bit, just to cauliflower this edge, just a teeny bit to add a bit more texture to the edge. So this is just using just water in a pipette, which will purposely cauliflower that edge a tiny bit. Help to break it up and create some watermarks, which you can read as um, some sort of foliage or whatever in that area. I'm not too keen on this line coming down here, so I'm going to wash that out. Soften that off, washing it out. There we go. And then just mop up the excess water. This bottom corner. Just need to be very careful with all this moisture around that when you lay it flat again, oops, that the you don't get any run backs in any areas you don't want to. So I'm just going to leave that a minute just to just to finish off running. But it's going to be painted in a similar fashion to this right hand side. So it's going to be wet and we're going to drop the colours in. Um, the river is going to stay dry and this is important because when we pull out the grasses we need to pull those out into dry paper otherwise they'll just spread so the river will be dry the body of the um the, the foliage will be wet so i'm going to take some moisture again on my big brush and i'm going to kind of fade it into this area that we've already painted so i don't really want to take it right the way up to that tree i'm just going to put some moisture and just let the paint creep up the um the painting here so we'll bring the moisture down like so <laughs> probably to about there, cutting into the into the, um, the river a little bit, because obviously we want the paint to creep out, but I'm not wetting the river, and that's important because all of these grasses are gonna get pulled out from the wet area into the river. And so you don't want the river wet, otherwise you'll lose the opportunity to do that. Okay, so now taking my colours again, uh, we're going to go back to the blues. So a little bit more blue this time. So the nice thalo or the azure or whatever blue you've got. Did you wet the rock, um, Stuart? I haven't painted the rock, but yes, we I... wet everything. Okay. All right. You can always wash it out if you don't like it. So here's my wet area. I'm coming below the wet area by a reasonable margin. And I'm going to start to drop in some of these darker colours now on this left hand side. You can leave a few gaps. You don't have to do it as a solid block of colour. I'm kind of wiggling the tip of the brush just to sort of apply the paint in a Bit of a broken fashion. 
thinking about keeping it a nice soft edge as we're hitting the the um, the bank of the river. So you can leave a few gaps of white if you want, um, which we can add the flower heads into. It's a bit more brown into that color, same mix. Just make sure that this color is nice and strong, otherwise it will just all wash away really. Um, there's plenty of, plenty of paint, a bit more blue. Coming all the way down this left hand side. I'll pull that out a little bit more into the edge of the bank. A bit of yellow in there, a bit more brown. Pretty strong. Uh, wiggling the brush just down here, just to keep it nice and keep the paint moving, give some energy to the work. All the way to the bottom. Okay. So now I'm going to pull out using the tip of the brush some fronds now from the wet area into, as I said, the dry area. So this will only work if the river is dry. Now you want to make sure not put any moisture into the river, otherwise this won't work. Just some sort of grassy type shapes, a few long um, structures. Just using wiggling with the tip of the brush. Just remembering as obviously they go back into the distance, make them a bit, try and make them a bit shorter. Don't make them quite as tall as the ones in the foreground. And if you are going into, I'll put a little bit of Payne's Gray in there. If you are going into this wash, just make sure that back into the wash, I should say, that the um, paint you're putting down is thicker than the colour you had on in the initial part of the wash. Okay, and then just a few more marks of that. And now I'm going to go into some yellow, some nice strong cadmium yellow here, really quite neat. So very little moisture in it. And then I can start to bring some of that a bit stronger into this. marks up there. Now I'm going to get some white. You can use watercolor, you can use some um, uh, gouache, whatever white you have. So I've got a, um, if I can find it. Is the one that you can't find when you need it. Probably should have got it out in advance. So here we go. So I've got some white gouache here. I'm just going to dip the brush straight into the gouache. So it's nice and neat. And then just do the same thing. Just start to apply some of this into these areas.
remember this is still a little bit wet so they should spread a bit it's going to give an indication some very soft small marks in the distance there as they get a bit bigger kind of coming towards us same on this side be nice bright whiter bits and obviously as they sort of run you might get a bit of mixing with the color that's already on the painting a few stronger marks in the foreground and there's absolutely no point doing this over the river itself because the river is white it just won't show up you want to do this in the darker elements of the wash put a couple in here just to break that up maybe create sort of a little bit of a zigzag a bit of a zigzag into the distance lead the eye into the painting Okay, that's enough of that. I'm just going to mop up some of the excess water I've got on down the bottom here. Uh, I'm going to reintroduce some water to my tree, or trees, I should say. And I quite like the, the, the soft softness at the top, so I don't want to lose all of that. But what I do need to do is get a bit more tone into it. Um, otherwise, it's just going to blend into the bank too much. So just using the water. And then in a very similar fashion to everything else we've done so far, leaving a few holes in it. So that it allow some of the colours to show through and also try and keep the shape that you want for the actual tree itself. Something like, something like that. And then I'm going to take my colour. So this is going to be a purpley, purpley brown colour. It's a bit darker, maybe a bit of blue in it as well. Bit more moisture. And then I'm going to touch the bottom of the tree where the trunk is and just let it run up the tree. Tip it a bit more. So just continually touching the bottom of the tree just to let the paint run up. Give that a moment. Bit more colour. Need to tip that a little bit and get the paint running this way. Just pull it out a little bit more. Just tipping, tipping the paint on into that moisture that we put on earlier. Just let it run round until you're reasonably happy with the shape. And then you can just lay it, lay it back down let it dry off. I'm going to give that a quick dry in a second. Before I do that, I'm going to take a brush and just lose the base of the tree so it's a bit tidier into that bank. Dry that off 
and then I can do the reflector. So taking water again. Now we've got a bank of grass that's sort of in front of this, um, this particular tree. So I'm gonna wet along that edge of the grass, maybe break the edge up a little bit so it's not too straight. And it comes all the way across. In natural fact, it goes all the way over this left-hand side, this dark piece of grass, uh, tree. So let's just bring the moisture up in a very similar fashion. Try and keep some of these nice light colors that I've already got at the edge of the tree there. And then I'm gonna take my dark color one I've just used and start to drop that along this moisture edge and let it just bleed up. The um, up the tree. running a bit fast there, so I'm going to block that off. Before I tilt it, get more moisture out to the edge. And load up the center a bit more, because obviously that's where I want the body of the color to come from, or the tone, I should say. And then I'll tilt that, or tip it rather, I should say. Let's get that moving over that side. Obviously missed a big patch of moisture there. Gonna need to drop some water into that shape, I think. I obviously didn't do that very well. I'm just going to take a bit more water. Just pull the colour out a little bit. And break up this line that's kind of created itself. Here. Okay, and then I'm just going to break up this bottom edge. So just using the brush and just tapping it along. So the lower part of the, the area is dry and all I'm doing is just touching the brush into that wash just to give me sort of a grassish or a, you know some lines that kind of come down to suggest grasses or longer grasses in that area. Let's just mop this up a bit, it's a bit dark there. Okay. And then again, I can dry that off. I'm going to put in the darker elements into the river now. So on this left hand side, I'm going to re wet uh, the reflected air or the shadowy reflected area. Bring that down into the foliage a little bit. Take a bit of that dark, put some more cerulean in it. It's a bit more blue. Tiny bit of yellow, slightly greeny blue. And then run that along the lower part of the 
So giving room for it to grow up and also come down. Bring that um, shadow color down the, the bank. There's a few spots of it in the actual grasses to link it all together. Okay. I can leave that alone, dry that off. And I can do the shadow on the edge of the bank and coming down into this tree. So again, water up to the base of the tree and then continue it along the edge of the bank a little bit. And I'm going to bring that down and then out into the water. so that we can let those colors run along the bank and then down into the water here. So taking the purpley colors that we've just used in the, in the tree, put a bit of yellow in there, so it's sort of more of a green dark, dropping it into the bank, coming along. Once it hits the tree, it should run down. I'll run it along the bank a little bit more. And then I need a bit of it to come down here as well. I'm going to add a bit more moisture. Just to allow it to, to bleed. Let those grasses sort of bleed down there. Bring a bit more of this dark through there. Just going to run the brush just along that edge just to soften it off. We link those two areas together. A bit more just to get the paint to run down. It's a bit more water. Just to let it break out into sort of lineish shapes at the end. So it's not too solid. Drop that a touch. Okay. And then I just need to take care of some edges. So break this edge up just with a bit of moisture in the brush, not too much, just a little bit. A little bit along this edge. These ones are sharp. Soften this off. And then finish this bit over here. 
and then I can just put that final bit of shadow coming down and then we can uh, see how you've all got on. So I'll just drop that in quickly. So continuing the moisture all the way through over here, plenty of water, wraps up the bank a little bit, just with these darks, we'll lose that. that edge there. So taking my nice dark colour, same one we've just been using, and then run it into this moisture. All the way through, even up the bank a bit. Break up the edge of that bank. Let's just break up this as well. A few dry marks. More dark, purple, blue. Bit of cerulean in there. Let's get a few more darker, dark marks down here. I'll wash out a few of those lines. Not too strong. I'll wash out this a little bit. Okay, this over here, and that will.